Yeah, so Apto started uh, at Facebook. It was uh, the same developers that worked with Mark Zuckerberg on the Facebook's cryptocurrency two years ago that took that vision and took that technology and made the public blockchain out of it. Then, of course, the big question is about the price. What's happening to the price? Hey, welcome back, everybody, to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin, back again with Ivan on Tech streaming on YouTube, posting on Twitter, as well as founder of Morales, a Web3 crypto project. Ivan, thanks for coming back on. Good to be here. Thanks, Arnold. We just did a, you know, awesome video on... Man, sorry, it's Austin, right? I'm calling yeah, it Arnold. Is. Your last name, I'm thinking about Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm sorry. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's Austin. <laughs> All our teachers in high school just called us Arnold. It's cool. We're used to it. <laughs> no, twin, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> twin brothers. Yeah. Um, Dude, but we just did a great video on you know top L1s, top uh, coins in the space, long-term holds, and just from a programmer's point of view, which is why I wanted to have you back to go over Aptos, new coin. Yes. I just know the basics. Uh, for the folks at home, what is Aptos? Yeah, so Aptos started uh, at Facebook. It was uh, the same developers that worked with Mark Zuckerberg on the Facebook's cryptocurrency two years ago that took that vision and took that technology and made the public blockchain out of it. So Aptos is using the programming language Move. So if you create smart contracts on top of Aptos, you use Move. And that is in turn a lot based on Rust to a big extent. So Rust is obviously a very big programming language in crypto because you have Solana, you have Radix, you have uh, uh, Aptos, you have Sui launching soon. So it's part of this Rust family of blockchains. And developers love Rust, by the way. In terms of uh, how it is created and how it is launched, we do have the tech that's been for quite some time developed in-house that is now uh, live. And then you have the tokenomics part. And I think that's where the biggest criticism comes from, the fact that it is heavily funded by VCs. And uh, it's it's a bit bad from two perspectives. Number one is the developer perspective. The developers on Ethereum are very passionate about Ethereum for two reasons. Number one is that they're onboarded into the ecosystem. They have the tools, they're set up. But number two, which is most important, is that they feel ownership of the network. There is no one entity that owns most of Ethereum. There is Vitalik, there is Ethereum Foundation, but they don't own nearly as much as the insiders in Solana or in Aptos or in other chains. And that's also why I think developers are more uh, dedicated to the Ethereum ecosystem done, for example, on Solana, where you do see many devs jumping from Solana to Aptos, from Solana to, the, to Sui, uh, which is not even live, but there's a lot of interest already for this other Rust chains. So when you have such a token distribution, of course, it turns off developers for, for the reason that they don't feel ownership, but also it's just another tool set that is not used on EVM. So you basically have two, two big obstacles. But in terms of the value proposition, I think it's very nice of them to think about concurrency. So the reason why Aptos is faster is because you can have things happening concurrently. And the way they've built their, their stack, their tech stack, and their tools for developers means that you as a developer have to do not a lot to make your transactions concurrent. And you don't have to manage this, this concurrency. You don't have to manage that, okay, first this transaction, then this transaction. Basically, Aptos has a system that schedules all of that for you and uh, optimizes all of this for you. And I think it's called Block STM. You can Google it, Block STM, let me double check. Uh, exactly, this is Block, uh, you Google Block STM and you will find this explanation of what it is. And uh, it's used by Aptos in order to ensure that you as a dev, you don't need to manage concurrency, it's managed for you. But then you have another competitor to Aptos coming soon, which is Sui. And I'm not even sure how to pronounce it because I've heard some people pronounce it Sway. But S-U-I, it's called anyway, Sui or Sway. Uh, so uh, Sui is also Rust-based and they're a bit lower level in, in terms that they don't do as much for you. They give you more flexibility as a developer to decide how you want to do concurrency, which means that you have to do more work, but also you're more flexible. So it's a bit different school of thought. It's kind of like C++, you have to manage memory yourself as a developer. You can mess up memory in C++, meaning that you can overwrite values that you shouldn't, meaning that you can get unexpected results because you put some value in memory and it, it was too big and it just overwritten something that you didn't mean to overwrite. And then you have other programming languages like Java, where memory is managed for you, but you don't have as much flexibility as in C++. And if you really want high performance, you want to have 
full flexibility. So this kind of with Sui and the, and the Aptos, that Sui, you have full flexibility to manage everything on the And that's what, what is called low level. So sometimes, you know, when I say that this tech is low level, people think, oh, it means it's bad because it's low level. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's not like that. Low level means that it's your job to do everything how you want it. You have full flexibility, but also you have a lot of work to do to figure everything out. And then high level means that decisions are made for you so you can be more productive. So for example, in Aptos, you have, you have this uh, concurrency management done for you. But at the same time, if you want to go to go and customize, you cannot do it because it's, it's more high level. It's more abstracted. You It's basically like tools built on top of lower level technologies. And it's all about like, what, what do you need? It's, it's different school of thoughts. Some projects don't, don't need this uh, management of uh, concurrency. Others do. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see what uh, how we play this out. I mean, in general, right now, um, dApps that are built on Ethereum, they have no customization because it's uh, it's basically, it's um, it, there's no concurrency either like an Aptos or, or, or Sui. So it's uh, right now the fact that the broader... DeFi ecosystem don't even have these features. So it will be interesting to see how people utilize it, if they utilize it in this low level way where they want to do all the customizations or not. And Solana, as far as I know, Solana, as far as I know, is more like SUI, where you have to manage a lot yourself in terms of how concurrency works. While Aptos is basically adding this feature to the Rust world where they manage the concurrency for you. So you can do this concurrent transactions way, way faster. So yeah, listen, I hope it's an overview. Then, of course, the big question is about the price. What's happening to the price? And yeah, like so, I said on my channel. yeah. Wait, so let me just sum it up. The bullish things are that it came out of Facebook, which has a little heat on it, some hype, and also the yes. programming language so easy to use. Yet we see all this criticism in the tokenomics and the expensive price. So please dive in. Yeah, yeah. So when it comes to economics, like we mentioned, uh, community doesn't feel that it's, uh, it's justly distributed. And uh, of course, it's a project. They can do whatever they want. It's their project. But it's just that community does not feel that they're included, that the, that it's a project that is meant to be here for the long term and include the community and so on and so forth. We'll see how it plays out because Solana had a similar criticism, but it did play out very well. Now, the difference with Solana, though, is just the market cap. I mean, it's massive. It, it's already down 50%. So it launched at approximately 2 billion circulating market cap. And um, like I said on my channel uh, before it launched, it's uh, important to just relax because there is never a hurry with new coins. Never a hurry with new coins. If you look at the Solana chart, you, you saw very similar that it launched, it dumped 50%, then it was sideways for like six months. So we, we're looking now how this market plays out. It seems that it dumped 50% and it is sideways now for a few days. And uh, this can be for months and it can even go down more if crypto it dumps more. So in general, uh, never fall into new coins. Uh, if uh, I mean, if, if one thing is if you can be in the private cell. That's that's one thing. But in uh, if, if you are falling into the the exchange listing, it's normally very bad. Also because sometimes you do have bots beating up the price because you they know that you're excited, so you're gonna buy at any price. <laughs> so they can beat up the price quickly and then uh, instantly dump. So that's why in many coins, just historically, we see that they list. They pump and they dump very quickly. So uh, it's always important to relax with the new coins. And it seems to be playing out quite well with um, with Aptos, the strategy. And I will use the same strategy for Sui or Sway, however you pronounce it, uh, to, to look and see. Because also the bull market is not even here. Right? Like we're not in a hurry. There's going to be so many opportunities to, to accumulate. But from a tech perspective, obviously, I'm very interested. From a price perspective, we're looking at, uh, at it from a distance still. Yeah, there's no rush in a bear market to rush into lower cap altcoins, let alone the newest altcoin. Which is not even low cap. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Which is, but I yeah. feel to echo your point, I agree there's no rush. I feel we saw the same sort of price thing. Cosmos, I recall when it launched, it was like in the top 15, Probably. top 20, you know, it leveled off. It was still finding price discovery. Filecoin started with such a high market cap or got to such a high market cap without the actual usage on the network and obviously it leveled off. So we exactly. saw that with, with Aptos. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking now that you said the Cosmos, I'm looking it launched at $2, 275 in 2019. And then it find a low at 2.16. And then it took like a year until it starts to go all the way to yeah 26 and above. So it's still, I mean, I'm not, even if it's expensive, it doesn't mean it's, it's a bad deal long term, but it's just, it, it's, it can also be a sideways for a year, maybe even more. And, um, uh, and yeah, 
that uh, I agree with you. Uh, and then, sorry, you were saying you mentioned Cosmos, and then I was thinking about something else you said. File, uh, file coin. Yeah, I, 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 exactly, file coin. But I was thinking about uh, internet computer, <laughs> which oh, is yes. like the the worst thing that can happen. So you gotta be careful because sometimes they don't even come up because internet computer ICP launched. Let me check the price here. Uh, I will tell. It's down ninety nine point three percent. It launched at seven hundred. It was such a bad launch, and it's it never came back, and it's just going down. It's it's always going down. It's minus ninety nine point. So that's the worst thing that can happen if you FOMO in. So yeah, be careful and uh, no need to FOMO. Final question, just as we look to the future, based on Aptos's programming language, or just based on your perspective as a developer, what sort of DApps can we expect to be built on there? Is it as simple as DeFi or more yeah. corporate or what? Well. It's all about the use cases of crypto. You can build any dApp. It's a it's a general purpose platform. So whatever is hot, you can build. Just like on Solana, you can build anything that is on ETH, but it will be faster. It will be lower fees. Hopefully it will not be shut down like Solana each and every week uh, when they have downtime. But in terms of what you can build, it's a general platform, general purpose platform. And the, the promise is that it's going to be easier to build with Rust, that you need to have fewer uh, lines of code to achieve the same thing. So for example, I, I checked the Radix docs, which are also Rust, and uh, they can build Uniswap in like, you know, 40 lines of code, 50 lines of code. And the, and the reason is uh, for that, and I don't know how Aptos do it. I need myself to do a bit more research. But for example, with something like Radix, you do have uh, assets being native on the blockchain. What do I mean by that? I mean that you have assets as a native data type, which already have all the functionalities of transfer, of trading, and all of that, which means that if you're building Uniswap, you don't have to recreate it from scratch, like on Ethereum, because on Ethereum, you don't have assets as native uh, native data types. Instead, asset is a contract, it's a program. So you need to build the asset, and then you need to figure out how the asset will interact with other assets. And although there are standards, these standards are not always uh, working. So for example, in on Ethereum, you can create a coin where you can have coin balance being changed randomly without anyone receiving or sending coins. You, you as a developer, you can say, okay, now this person has this many coins and then, you know, snap of a finger, you change everyone's balance to whatever you want because there is no definition of what is an asset. It's up to the dev to implement the standards and you can implement them without even that they make sense. Like for example, you send and receive coins, but your balance doesn't follow the incoming and outgoing transactions. It's fully possible on ETH. That's, for example, what happens to rebase tokens, where they can like remove your balance, they can add it however they want uh, based on some algorithm. But it also makes it a bit difficult to work with because you as, a, let's say you're a wallet or you're an exchange, you never know that you know the balance is going to change according to incoming and outgoing transactions. Uh, so it's a bit more difficult to build around. While on something like Radix, uh, asset is a base, it's a base layer asset where you have already sending, receiving, Trading, all that is already built in the actual asset. So if you want to build an exchange, it's easy. You just you just use the existing functionality, and um, you know, all of these use cases should, in theory, at least, be more easy to build. So let's see. It's in general this this whole approach of having native assets. I know that Avalanche is having a similar approach, not exactly the same, but also a similar approach where they have native assets. So that's another trend, by the way, which for, for developers is interesting. The fact that you have different uh, types of uh, of base assets. And on Ethereum, you don't have any base asset. It's just ETH. ETH is the base asset. That's it. And with ETH, you cannot have this manipulation of balances. It's not like an account can just get ETH out of nowhere. No developer can change that. But in tokens, you can change anything, anyone's balance. And it, it, it's a lot of flexibility, but it also creates some weird uh, effects at the end of the day, which makes it difficult to build exchanges or wallets around because, yeah, you never know if a token will behave as a token or something else. Always so much more we can dive into. I want to have it you back a in a few months and just get an updated perspective on the market from your POV. Yes. But Ivan, yes. thanks so much for coming on. The links for all your stuff are down below. I encourage my audience to check it out. Final thoughts on Aptos. Well, final thoughts is get involved, learn it, especially if you're a developer. Get involved. Check the documentation for Aptos. Check it for Sway, Sui when they come out. Check it for Solana, for Radix, for ETH, for Optim. I mean, j just be in this industry because you never know. And it's so easy to just learn all of them. It's not It's not rocket. If you are a developer, that being said. If you're not a developer, learn development. Why not? Listen, it's not difficult. You can learn it easily. You can go to Morales Academy, take our basic course. I I'm going to teach you there. I have a course where I teach you from scratch how to program in JavaScript and then Solidity. 
So yeah, get involved, get technical, and uh, don't FOMO. Don't FOMO. We have a lot of time. We, time is... I mean, the only thing we have in the bear market is, is time. We don't have a lot of else. The portfolio is down, everything is down, but time, we have that. <laughs> so true. Thanks, man.